Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, so that means it's time for another Friday Reads video. Um, so I actually finished four books in the past week, and I am currently reading three books, so let's go. Um, the first book I finished was Shalom Auslander's novel Mother for Dinner. Um, this is his latest novel. It was just published uh, last year in 2020. And it's basically an extended parable about identity using cannibals. Um, so essentially the premise is that this man named Seventh Seltzer, who is a quote-unquote cannibal American, um, he and his siblings, um, by the way, they're named in sequential order, so they're named like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and he's the seventh child. Um, and then they have a sister named Zero. Um, so anyway, so there are, there are 12 sons and the sister, although one of them is dead, so now there are only 12 of them in all. So they sort of face um, whether or not to eat their mother after she dies, because that is the cannibal tradition, to consume your loved ones once they are gone, in order that they will live on in you. <laughs> um, so that's basically the premise, um, but, and, and I was largely entertained throughout um, this book, but I did feel like toward the end it got pretty repetitive. Um, because there were 12 siblings, it kind of became difficult to remember who everybody was. Um, especially because they're named like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, right? Um, which made it, I think, a little bit more challenging than if they had had maybe slightly more distinctive names. I don't know. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was quite funny and I did enjoy it. It has Shalom Auslander's um, blend of dark darkness and comedy and irreverence. Um, but yeah, I did feel like it got repetitive toward the end. I think seventh, like even though he sort of has certain attitudes about this throughout most of the novel, then sort of suddenly changes his tune as we get closer to the end and I don't feel like that's adequately explained and then he sort of goes back to the way he had originally thought which again also kind of goes unexplained. Um, so I feel like Auslander doesn't really stick the ending um, and again I feel like I almost feel even weird calling this a novel because it really is more like a parable like I don't think we're supposed to think of these characters as like fully developed, realized people, um, because they are just sort of stand-ins for ideologies and things like that. So I was entertained. I do think if you like dark comedy and irreverence, um, it's worth reading. But yeah, I just feel like things happen that don't necessarily make sense, and he doesn't quite stick the landing at the end. So three and a half stars, liked it, definitely not going to be for all readers though. <laughs> Um, so the next book I finished was Ijeo Molua's Mediocre, which I read as an ebook from the library, so I don't have it here to hold up. Um, and in this book, Olua basically argues that white men have, throughout his, the history of the United States, um, have upheld white male mediocrity at the expense of greatness or um, excellence. Uh, yeah, so essentially that, that white men do things to maintain the status quo and or their own mediocrity rather than allowing women and or people of color to have opportunities to excel. So that's essentially the premise of the book. Um, and in every chapter, Olua sort of traces um, an example throughout history. Uh, she sort of starts with the Wild West kind of days and goes up to um, more present day controversy around Colin Kaepernick's kneeling during the national anthem to protest police brutality and how much of a controversy that blew up into, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for me, this, this book was kind of an up and down reading experience. I felt like the second half of it was a lot stronger than the first half. Um, and I don't know if that's just because the historical examples that Olua discusses in the first half of the book just weren't as interesting to me, or if 
they're not actually as interesting to her, and so she doesn't write about them with the same sort of passion that she writes about the more contemporary issues that come up in the second half of the book. So I'm not sure whether it was it was me or it was her. Um, so yeah, so a bit of an up and down reading experience for me. Um, I do think if you're interested in anti-racism, this is still a good book to read. I would probably, I would definitely suggest reading her other books. So you want to talk about race before I would suggest this one though. Um, but still interesting and informative and thought-provoking, as I have come to expect with Aloha's work, and I will certainly read whatever she writes next, so three and a half stars. Um, I then finished an audiobook that I was listening to, which was Agatha Christie's The Body in the Library. This is the second novel in the Miss Marple series, um, and, I it's, and it's funny because I had just read um, the Miss Marple collection of short stories you know, with sometime within the last month, um, and I saw that this was available as an audiobook, and I just, I wanted an audiobook to listen to, <laughs> so, um, so I quite enjoyed this overall, um, and yeah, it's, it's like a standard Miss Marple cozy mystery, there are some interesting twists and turns that occur, um, I thought the audiobook narrator, who I believe was Stephanie Cole, did a great job with the audiobook production of this, so I would, recommend that if you like listening to audiobooks. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book in the Miss Marple series at some point. Um, so I ended up giving this 3.75 stars. It was good, I was entertained, I did enjoy the twists and turns, but like with Murder in the Vicarage, which is the first in the Miss Marple series, I kind of wanted more Miss Marple than we got! <laughs> so. I guess we'll see when I go, when I progress in the series, whether we get at any point what I would consider to be an adequate amount of Miss Marple. So we shall see. Um, so 3.75 stars would definitely recommend if you like cozy mysteries. Um, and then the last book I finished this week, I just finished this morning. This was one that I got from the, um, my local library when I just went to browse. Um, this was in the new releases and it looked interesting to me so I, I got it. So it is called The Philosopher Queens, edited by Rebecca Buxton and Lisa Whiting, and this is basically a collection of entries and overviews about the lives of, I'm thinking around 20 uh, female philosophers. It starts way back in um, ancient times with figures like Hypatia and Diotima. Um, and progresses all the way to still living figures like um, uh, Angela Davis. I was going to say Audre Lorde. I was like, that's not right. Angela Davis. Um, and uh, who else? Anita Allen and um, oh, what is the name of that last woman in this collection? Aziza Al Hebri. I knew I was not going to get the name right. Um, so, anyway, so each entry is usually only like six or seven pages long. It kind of gives you an overview of this woman's life and a discussion about her specific contributions to philosophy. Um, and there were well-known figures included in here like Mary Wollstonecraft and Hannah Arendt and Simone de Beauvoir and then lesser known figures like Ban Zhao, who I'd never heard of, and um, Aziza al Hebri, who I'd never heard of, and Sophie Olawole, I believe is her name, who was a uh, Nigerian philosopher. So I really like this overall. Um, you know, because all of the entries are written by different authors, um, they're not quite uniform, so some of them are a little bit heavier on biographical details, and some of them are a little bit heavier on um, philosophical details. And I actually, I, I personally sort of preferred the philosophical details, although some of them got a little bit in the weeds for me for an overview, but but whatever. It did at least prompt me to become more interested in, in seeking out work by some of the figures who are mentioned here. Um, so I guess it did its job in that regard. Um, but yeah, I really like this overall. I found it super compelling. As I was reading it, I would be like, oh, I'll just read one more entry, <laughs> right? Um, so it's, it's a pretty quick re read as well. I think I, I literally started it on Saturday maybe and I just finished it this morning and you know I just would read like like three you know maybe like three or four entries a day or something um, but yeah really good overall really enjoyed it if you like 
feminism and or philosophy and or sort of anthologies like this that give you a broad overview about women in history, um, I would definitely recommend this. So yeah, really liked it. Four stars. Um, so that's everything that I finished this week. So in terms of currently reading, I have several buddy reads and group reads that are ongoing. Um, so first, Jen of Remembered Reads and I are working on our buddy read of Khaled Matawa's Tocqueville, which is a collection of poetry. Um, I am a little bit less than halfway through this um, collection, and we've checked in once. We're going to check in again tomorrow, I think, so this is going well so far. Um, oh, this is also my April pick for my Arab American Literature Project, where every month I read one book written by an Arab American writer. Um, so I'm sure that by the time I do my next Friday Reads video, we will have finished with this. Um, I'm also buddy reading with Raina of Rainier Books, Arvind Adiga's The White Tiger. I am not quite 100 pages into this. It is a reread for me. I definitely am remembering what I loved so much about this book when I first read it 10 plus years ago. Um, I don't remember much about the plot because it has been so long since I originally read it, but I'm quite enjoying it and again finding Ballroom um, as the narrator very charming and compelling character, so definitely enjoying my buddy read of The White Tiger. Um, and then last, but, but certainly not least, I'm still working on my mammoth. <laughs> So, still working on The Count of Monte Cristo, which I'm doing as a group read along with, um, it's being hosted by Summer at Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats and involves, um, several other people on Booktube, um, so we're all doing this as a, as a group read where everyone's sort of going at their own pace. One person's already finished. I'm probably going to be the second person to finish, it seems like, so we'll see. Um, I am currently on page... 1132 of 1462. So I only have 330 pages left of this book. So I only have like a standard novel's length of this left. So um, I definitely want to finish this up in the next week or two. Um, it'll kind of depend on how much I can buckle down and really commit to like reading like 35 to 40 pages of it every day. Um, so we'll see, but I certainly am on track to finish this before the end of April. Um, it's still going well. Uh, finally, some actual revenge has been taken in sections that I just read this morning, and it only took, you know, a thousand plus pages to get there. So. <laughs> but we're finally coming around to the vengeance, which I'm totally here for, so I'm entertained. <laughs> um, so that's it. So that's everything I finished this week or am currently reading. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear that please feel free to let me know that down in the comments below. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, what a kill you to call your mother.